on Primetime Morning, understanding the business culture in Asia first before venturing to the region. I'll find out from the co-author of the newly launched book, it's titled Journey to the East, why that is a viable strategy for a successful foray into Asia. Welcome back to the program. Now, if you're from the West and planning on heading to Asia to build a successful business, you might want to take note. It may not be enough to just attend an intensive course to pick up the basic language skills. In fact, you're more likely to come face to face with the region's cultural challenges and you'll be ill prepared to handle them. Well, that's the premise of a new book, Business Journey to the East, co-authored by Professor Wee Chao Hao and Fred Kuhn. Professor Wee, who is with us this morning, explains why it takes an understanding of Asian business culture to break down the communication barriers. Good morning, Professor. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. So first up, tell us uh, what sparked your interest to, to come up with a book like that. Well, as you know, since uh, seventy-eight, the opening of China, and then subsequently India as well, there's this tremendous uh, growth and interest in doing business in Asia. And that is why we feel very strongly it's time that the West get to understand the East much better. Mm -hmm. What is driving this interest in the West to do business in this region particularly? I think it's a market, you know, the population opportunity just yeah, to make money. For, <laughs> you know, just look at China, even in the right. session, what we call they're looking at six to eight percent growth. Mm. You know, there are plenty of opportunities there. So, what, which areas in Asia did you focus on in this book? Well, for us, we focus more on those societies or countries that are influenced very much by Confucian values and ethics because that happened to be a, uh, a little bit of my forte uh -huh. and it's much easier to address that also partly because I'm known to study Chinese classics, Chinese right. culture and how to apply that to the business world. Give us a few examples then, which countries, you know, which Well, particular... largely for example China, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, uh, Indonesia, you know, the large Chinese ethnic uh, mm -hmm. community and uh, a little bit of even Thai Thailand for that matter. Uh -huh. yeah. But basically are those countries that have a strong historical connection to China. And how did the two of you work on this book? I mean, your yeah. co-author Fred, uh, what was his area of expertise? Now, he, he is a consultant and he used to work for, he used to be a CEO of a multinational firm. Uh, I'm a trainer, a professor in the university and I also sit on boards of companies and mm -hmm. I do a, a fair bit of consulting. So we find this idea of he being literally from the West, a Westerner, mm. I from the East. Mm -hmm. I think it's not just a title of the book, it's the co-authorship that makes it, I think, interesting mm -hmm. and, and, and right. worth noticing. So you're mentioning that Fred literally put himself through the test. I mean, he went to the different countries to literally experience the cultural minefields, I guess, that yes. you have to look out for. In his lifetime, he paid a lot of tuition fees himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he was so yeah. keen to say, hey, and it's, it's high mm. time I tried to uh, document some of these experiences and hopefully uh, help my counterparts that, that, that try to trail behind me coming to Asia. Mm. And that was his uh, inspiration. And my mm -hmm. motivation was, hey, it's high time the West get to know the East much better mm -hmm. and try to understand our culture, our nuances, especially in the way we conduct our business. Can you uh, perhaps zoom in and focus mm -hmm. on one nuance, uh, uh, an example that a lot of people overlook sometimes? Well, I think clearly, you know, in the East, we are much more indirect. The okay. West are more blunt, very mm. aggressive. Mm. And uh, we tend to be more quiet. But you know, when you are quiet at meetings or, or in official function, it doesn't mean you are dumb or you, right. you are not able to put your views across and so on. So the in inability to catch this and inability to understand the social networks. You know, in the East, in Chinese, we say qing. Li fa. That means mm -hmm. we want to cultivate the feelings, uh -huh. the relation first. And they say guan si as well. Yes, of course. I mean, the, and, and this is to be fair, the West also have business networks. Yes. Mm -hmm. But their business network is strictly focused on the business, on the contracts. In the East, it's a bit fuzzy. Yes, it's on the visa plus the personal dimension. Yeah. In all these personal friendship, personal networks, which right. makes it difficult for the West to grasp because it's not transferable, it's only personal to the holder, which means that only you and you alone can cultivate it. Mm. And the Chinese word guan si, guan means close. Mm. So what you must do is to cultivate before it's uh, mm -hmm. close, you know, and not when I'm there, you know, because if once I'm a CEO, how do I know whether you're genuine or not? <laughs> right. I think this is a big difference, difference and especially yeah. in the realm of politics and in Asia, you notice. Although, 
Yeah. Although what you're talking about, some of these are, are very hard to teach in a book. It's not something you can, it's not something tangible where you say, do step one, two, three, four, five, yes. and therefore you will cultivate a relationship. Yes. yes. And yeah, different right. people will have, uh, mm. some people will get along, some people mm. won't. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. so what then can, you know, if I go in cold and I take your book, yeah. are there key points that I can take with me to try and Our apply? answer is yes, in that we provide uh, guidelines, we provide enough of anecdotes and stories to back up our our statements and I think uh, uh, my belief always is awareness is the beginning of wisdom so before you enter into an arena you must be aware mm -hmm. of the rules the way mm -hmm. people do things mm -hmm. and to be sensitive mm -hmm. to be humble and to mm -hmm. be willing to learn uh, rather than to say hey I come from a, a seemingly a more superior right. culture or whatever mm -hmm. and then you pay high tuition fees like my co-author did you know mm -hmm. which I think is unnecessary uh -huh. Well, so clearly there are differences between the way, you know, Asian businessmen and Westerners would do or conduct their deals. But what about similarities? Did you find in any areas that they share very, very same? Uh... Yeah. Here I must say that uh, business principles are universal. Mm. I.e. in every society, uh, we believe in good leadership, we believe in good corporate governance, we believe in empowerment and so on. However, it is the practice of the same principles. In us, we all believe in negotiation. Now, how you practice negotiation and how I approach negotiation can be very different. So I always argue it is not the principles. It's how we go about exercising or practicing the same principles that make us uh, 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 different and also can sometimes cause a lot of uh, misunderstanding. Mm. Think negotiation. The West will go straight on, bang, bang, bang. The East will just watch you know, and observe <laughs> and then try to find the loopholes and then they will gradually you know, uh, uh, move in. But there's, therefore, that account for their indirectness or seemingly weakness. I mean, mm. Actually, it could be a tremendous strength. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, what we find is that you know, trying to bridge this gap uh, is very important. So yeah. that we can reduce the mismatch of understanding, we can also come to find a common goal. So it actually, and we all both want to make money. Right, right? effort should be made that. from both sides. Yeah. I mean, yes, correct, correct. Asians as well yes, should understand right. the right. way business yeah. is done. That's right. But a lot of times, unfortunately, these lessons are best learned uh, through trial and error. Yeah. Because you tend to forget, you read it in a book, you say, okay, when I go there, but then you forget, you throw it out the window during the negotiation, you're, I want this and I want that. And the, guy, uh, you the, know? <laughs> the nice thing is that since the book was launched, and as you know, you probably know we make it to the bestseller list five mm -hmm. weeks in a row and uh, many people who read it say my gosh i wish i read this before mm. uh bec because uh, it mirrors a lot of their past anecdotes experiences where they they really goof okay. you know, one example is karaoke you know uh, and they, they never right. realize in the in, in in the meeting room you look so quiet and sedated yeah. but once you are in the karaoke room boy you are that's what the chinese say you know you in a, in a room setting formal setting you are like a worm no Right. But once at night come you're like a dragon, you, know, mm. you suddenly come alive and you start to see a different perspective of the person and uh, after a few drinks, a few songs, boy, that guy can be quite something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that is quite a revolution and you know, yeah, a re revelation, quite a revelation and also quite a shock. Yeah. Uh, to, to the unknowing Westerner, gee, you know, I never know this guy is that good. You know? oh, he didn't know he had to beef up on his drinking skills as well <laughs> to do business in Asia. So. It's so very true, especially in Korea. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's yeah. right. Well, nice thank slide. you so much for thank coming you. in this thank morning. You. I'm Professor Wee there. Um, Wee Chao Hao, co-author of the book, Business Journey to the East. It details some very useful strategies to adopt when doing business in Asia. And I tell you, different parts of Asia also yeah, practice still very, very different. Very different and, and like Prof said, uh, I think the best thing is just be, be aware and be sensitive. You know, so a lot of times we tend to speak before we listen. So we should listen yeah. first and then speak.